Today we will be comparing the RX470 from Sapphire with the RX470 from Sapphire, but called the Mining Edition. These cards almost look the same, but they have some things different from each other. Okay, so you may know that my Blue Yeti died and that's the reason why I didn't upload a video for a few days. But as you can see, we did something in our spare time. We upgraded our benchmark rig to the main computer with a brand new wallpaper. It will be available after the video for you guys. It's a pretty sexy one. Okay, so first of all, let's go over the differences between these two cards. So they are both Sapphires, they are both having 4 gigabytes of memory and they both have Samsung memory, just in case. Because we're really lucky on this one that we had Samsung memory on both. So that's why I picked this one out, but let's see what the difference actually is. So the first huge difference between the cards is that the regular RX 470 supports HDMI and multiple screens. The Mining Edition only has a DVI slot, so you will only be able to support 1080p if you go straight from that card. But of course, using Crossfire with a regular card will give you the option to use HDMI and gaming 4K. Ho ho, but it doesn't stop there, there's even more things different on these two cards. First of all, the Mining Edition does not have RGB lighting, it does not have a dual BIOS switch on the card because it does not have a dual BIOS. Next up, the Sapphire Mining Edition has a 8-pin connector on the top of the card for the power supply and the regular one has it on its back. Also, there's another difference between these two cards. The regular edition has a really nice backplate, but the Mining Edition does have absolutely no backplate, so it's just sitting there having no backplate. It does look pretty cool, but... I'd really rather have a backplate because if you're carrying it around, I'm really thinking like, hey, I'm gonna damage the board with my sticky fingers. So let's benchmark these two puppies on mining and gaming and let's see the difference. And keep in mind, both of these cards are BIOS modded exactly the same with the timing. So these cards should do about the same on mining, but we're gonna see what the mining edition is gonna do differently. Okay, so first of all, we benchmarked Ethereum mining on both of these cards. The core was clocked at 1150 MHz and the memory at 1950. The voltage was set to minus 60 millivolts to give it a more advantage on wattage. So we came to a really nice 27.05 MHz per second on the regular card using 75 watts. The Mining Edition performed a little bit better on the 27.35 MHz per second, but it used 78 watts instead of 75, so it was using more power and this may be the cause of the BIOS mod. Next up was Ubic, and Ubic performed pretty well on both of the cards. The first regular card performed 27.8 MHz per second using only 69 watts. The Mining Edition did a little bit better with 28.5 MHz per second at 67 watts. Why this happens, I have no idea, but it seems to be mining pretty well on Ubic. Next up we benchmarked Zcash and it was doing pretty great on both of the cards, but there wasn't actually a huge difference. The first one performed 271 hashes per second at 72 watts and the Mining Edition did 275 hashes per second at 72 watts as well. Last but not least, we have Monero Mining as well for both of these cards. The normal version did 663 hashes per second at 67 watts. The Mining Edition did 700 hashes per second at 69 watts. So it was doing a little bit better and it was using only 2 watts extra for the 40 hashes per second. But of course, you see in the corner that we used the same core and memory settings all over the benchmarks. Of course, there's gonna be way better core and memory settings for all of these coins, but today I wanted to show you what the difference was between both cards. So make sure to buy the right card, and for now, it looks that the Sapphire Nitro with the gaming HDMI connectors and whatsoever is gonna be better for reselling after mining. So keep that in mind you will always need to think about reselling your cards. But hold on, we have one more thing to show you guys. 
we're gonna do a 3D mark with Time Spy. Time Spy is really made for 4K gaming, so it's gonna tell you if you are able to do 4K gaming or not. It's the latest version of 3D Mark. So Time Spy is going to be the one that's gonna be saying like, hey, your graphics card can do 4K gaming. So if you're gonna resell your card, you're gonna be knowing like, hey, this card can do 4K gaming if someone asks you, or it's gonna be like, hey, it's only gonna do 1080p. So yeah, you got your answer out of this core. So let's check it out. Okay, so after Time Spy finishes up, you will get an end score. As you can see here, we got 6122, but we were recording the footage of the 3D Mark, so actually the score is gonna be way higher. But today I was benchmarking the RX 580 and the RX 570. But the score is gonna be compared with the RX 470 Gaming and Regular Edition. So as you can see here, a 4K gaming PC needs about 6733 on the score to get about 30 frames per second on 4K gaming. But unfortunately, both of the RX 470 Mining and Regular Edition came to a score of 4000. So that is the answer and it isn't able to do 4K gaming. But in Crossfire, of course, you can get a score of about 6000 and that will be getting a little bit closer to the 4K gaming. But unfortunately, they don't get it together to 4K. So you will have to do with 1080p. So the DVI slot on the RX 470 Mining Edition isn't really a big deal then. So hopefully you all enjoyed today's video and see you guys in the next one.